Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with bourbon pepper pan sauce. That's right, at least once or twice a year, I like to do a video that features a pan sauce. Since for me, it's one of the most important techniques for a home cook to master. And by adding this very easy to learn skill to your repertoire, you'll be producing things that most mere mortals only can get in a restaurant. So with apologies to professional sauciers everywhere, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna begin by generously seasoning this New York strip. And that's gonna mean coating the surface with a generous application of kosher salt, as well as a very, very, very heavy application of freshly ground black pepper. All right, extra credit if it's a little bit coarsely ground. And of course, we're gonna do that to both sides. And we'll also use the excess on the plate to get the edges. And we really do wanna be generous here, especially with the black pepper. All right, believe it or not, using this method, we're not actually gonna add any black pepper to the sauce. It's all gonna come from the surface of the steak. Or at least that's the plan. And by the way, the whole idea of a pan sauce is to obviously make it after you cook something in a pan. But something I will go over in the blog post is that if you're gonna grill your steaks or cook them in some other non-pan method, I'm gonna let you know how you can make this sauce anyway. So don't worry, if you wanna use this after grilling, there is a way. And then what we'll do once our steak has been seasoned is simply set that aside. Well, we move on to the rest of our mise en place, which is simply a French culinary term for getting all your ingredients together. And besides some veal or chicken stock and some heavy cream, we're gonna need about one ounce of bourbon. And no, you don't have to use the really nice stuff, except I don't drink anything that's not nice. So I was forced to use something a little higher end. And then we'll also need a little touch of cold butter, as well as some minced garlic. And that is pretty much gonna be it for this very, very simple sauce. And the reason we get this all together before we start is because we want to be able to make our sauce in the five or six minutes it takes for our steak to rest. And if we try to run and grab all this stuff once our steak is done, it's going to take too long. But once we do have all that set, we can head to the stove, where I'm going to cook my steak over medium-high heat and a little bit of duck fat, just because I had some leftover. But you could use clarified butter or any other kind of fat if you want. Oh, and let me give you a little New York strip buying advice. Never buy one that has a membrane going through it like this one. All right, that is the last strip that they cut from a loin, and in my opinion, the least desirable. So I was not paying attention, but you should be. But anyway, I ended up cooking this for about five minutes per side, shooting for something hopefully close to medium rare. And besides giving it about five minutes per side, I also like to sear the edges a little bit, for mostly aesthetic reasons. But more browning usually equals more flavor. And if you're wondering about that dark spot forming at the bottom of the pan, that's what we call the fond. F-O-N-D. And all that is is our meat drippings and juices caramelizing onto the metal, along with, of course, a good amount of black pepper. And as you'll see, once we remove the steak, that's going to form the foundation of our pan sauce. Okay, so for step one, we're going to cook a steak to our liking in a steel pan, hopefully forming a fabulous fond in the process. And what we'll do is remove that steak to a plate to rest and turn off the heat. Repeat, turn off the heat. There is more than enough heat still left in that pan to do the next step which is gonna to be to quickly saute some garlic, which I'm gonna to toss in and sort of press with the back of my spoon, just to sort of bruise it up a little bit and bring out a little more flavor. And I know the pan's dry, but that's fine. We'll just give that a quick working over with our spoon before adding a little chunk of our butter. And again, the heat is off. And as you can see, that pan is still really hot, which is why we're only gonna let this garlic sizzle for a few seconds. At which point with the heat still off, we can go ahead and add our bourbon which is quickly gonna vaporize and form a very flammable cloud, which if your flame was still on, could explode into a fireball. But after just a second or two, all the alcohol should evaporate. In fact, I tried to ignite some just after a couple seconds, and I got nothing. No alcohol vapor left. And besides not burning your eyebrows off, the other reason you want the heat off here is because of how fast that bourbon reduces. I mean, in the time it took me to change the camera angle, it had already reduced down to a sticky glaze. And had we had the heat on, that could have burned. But assuming it didn't, let's go ahead and add our chicken broth. Or even better, veal stock if you have it. And then once that's in, we can go ahead and put our heat back on to high. And as we stir this, as that liquid comes up to a boil, it's going to dissolve all that beautiful peppery goodness off the bottom. And what once was something that most people would scrub off with a sponge when they were doing the dishes, we've just easily reclaimed to help create an incredibly flavorful sauce. Okay, so we'll go ahead and deglaze that pan with our chicken broth until the bottom of our pan is nice and clean, which is only gonna take a couple minutes. And by the time this step is done, don't be surprised if your stock's reduced a little bit, maybe by as much as half, which is exactly what we want. And then what we'll do at this point is go ahead and stir in our heavy cream, 
And basically, other than final seasoning, this sauce is done when it's reduced to the exact thickness you want. And by the way, you probably want to stay pretty close to this and keep an eye on it. All right, start to finish, this sauce took me exactly six minutes to make. And I know they say a watch pot never boils, but trust me, this one will. And if you're not around, it will boil and then burn. And while I will give this a taste for final seasoning later, I knew I was going to need a little pinch of salt, as well as a little shake of cayenne. So I tossed those in while I was waiting for this to reduce. Oh, and I should mention, this recipe is going to make enough sauce for two steaks. I'm only cooking one because I'm home alone, but just something to keep in mind. And I'm not going to tell you exactly how far you should go, but when we're talking about rich, decadent sauces like this, you don't want to go too thick. So right here I was getting very close, but I did want it a touch thicker. So I let that boil for another half minute or so. And then once we've decided that's reduced long enough, we'll go ahead and toss in the rest of our cold butter and immediately turn off the heat. And with the heat off, we'll keep that butter moving until it disappears. And once that happens, other than giving it one last taste for seasoning, our bourbon pepper pan sauce is officially done. Which means we can go ahead and plate up with our steak. And please, be a professional and use a warm plate. And of course, if you feel like decorating this with something, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the Bob Ross of your pan sauce. So if you wanted to scatter over some happy little herbs, feel free. But I decided to serve mine as is, in its purest form. And there really is no rule that a pan sauce has to be a gorgeous color. But I think it helps, and this one certainly qualifies. But anyway, I grabbed a fork and knife and went in for a taste. And for me, what makes this such a great steak sauce is not just the richness from the butter and cream, but that play between the sweetness of the bourbon and the spiciness from our black pepper just works so, so perfectly in this. So I really do love how this sauce comes out. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're not cooking your steaks in the pan and you're gonna do them on the grill, you could just start this recipe right from the point where we cook our garlic and butter and just continue on from there and then simply keep the sauce warm until your steaks are ready. And even though you might have to add a spoon of freshly ground black pepper to the sauce, that will still work, and you can be enjoying pretty much the same sauce we're experiencing here. And no, my steak knife is not that dull. This grass-fed beef was not super tender. Hey, but at least it had that membrane in it. But anyway, this sauce was so amazing and flavorful, I didn't even care about that. Oh, and one last thing, if you're not into beef, this sauce would be absolutely fantastic on things like grilled pork chops or grilled chicken. But no matter what you use this on or under, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.